Hi, Kana here. Welcome back. Today, we need to talk about echoes and settle the debate once and for all. Which is better? What should you be farming and why? Let's break it down. I'll keep the section on echoes quick and simple since you probably clicked on this already knowing what they are. But in case you don't know, echoes are the stat increases that affect your resonators, aka characters in Wuthering Waves. They have predetermined guaranteed stats and they also have random ones. What's important to remember them for the context of this video is that four cost echoes have access to different stats than any of the other costing echoes. And the same can be said for three costs comparing them to one costs. That's more relevant for the next section, but the key takeaway about echoes is that you do need them to do damage, survive enemy hits, and just play the game in general. Speaking on echoes and how they work is relevant because it affects how reasonable it is to have usable or good echoes in general. Believe it or not, the average player does not spend 24 hours, 7 days a week staring at their screen beating up countless echoes anxiously awaiting the daily reset and their daily happiness. And I accidentally just described myself. Point is that since echoes can sometimes be tedious to farm for, new strategies or tactics have been developed to speed up the process. Now for talking about what makes the process long and drawn out, it's the fact that there are more echoes for certain costs than others. Take a look at how many three cost echoes you have to choose from when you want to farm them. And now take a look at how many one costs there are. Just the total number of one costs makes the difference huge, and that's not even talking about how many of the actual monster exists per map. And it's unfortunate because the main set of a lot of these three costs are actually very, very important and typically provide big changes to how a character works. Access to energy regeneration or element damage percent is very impactful for how characters perform or function. And if you don't believe me, take a look at the difference between a Rover and a Calcharo with three different builds each. The difference is several thousands of damage depending on which echo setup you choose and which character you decide. But the math is there. Don't ignore the power of even a single element damage percent main. But of course, if you want this damage increase, you're gonna have to farm a three star echo. And that's actually the root of all problems in this discussion about 44111 and 43311. Before we get into that though, it's actually time that we talk about 43311, 44111, and what I'm actually referring to or what they are. For this section, I'll be referencing things with Calcharo in mind so we have an example to base things off of and also just to make explaining things much easier. But back to the numbers and referencing things like 43311 specifically refers to a setup of echoes that you use to build a character. The numbers from the title indicate the cost of each echo, and in this case 43311 means that you are using a 4, 3, 3, 1, and 1 costing set of echoes to build out your resonator. The same rules apply when we also talk about the 44111 echo setup. Now if we run Calcharo on the 43311 echo variation, this is what he would look like. He would have a crit rate or crit damage 4 cost echo, a combination of 2 element damage percent or attack percent 3 costs, and finally his 2 last 1 cost echoes would be attack percent. This has a decent spread of crit rate, crit damage, and attack, while also providing valuable element damage percent in the build as well. On a 44111 setup, Calcharo would have two crit rate or crit damage echoes, and three one cost attack percent mains to fill out the rest of his slots. Let's talk strengths and weaknesses though for 43311 first though. 43311 has a few major advantages over any other combination of echoes you choose to equip your resonators with. It provides the most damage, more energy regeneration, and is statistically more efficient. Now the increased energy generation specifically can result in more liberation casts or smoother rotations since you have more energy, or this can lead to faster kills, which is also great when damage matters and you have limited time to clear. Another misunderstood benefit of this setup is the flexibility. Although the highest damage that you can see here is the element element percent 43311 setup, the second highest DPS is with a build where you have an element percent and an attack percent instead. That's only a difference of 3.8% damage, and this is a lot of nerd speak, but it's not that big a difference. But if we move on from this, the main and only weakness that 43311 has is what I mentioned in the previous section. It's just annoying to farm for. Players really aren't looking to hop to a hundred different worlds to farm herons or rose shrooms. 
And this is honestly the main reason why 44111 is even used. And now let's talk about the alternative build, the 44111 setup. In all honesty, there's only really one reason to use this, and that's if you are limited on time, frustrated with the fact that you can't get three costs, and you would rather just farm bosses and one cost echoes instead. There are plenty of positives and pros to deciding to only fight bosses and one cost echoes, and that includes bosses guaranteeing to drop their respective echoes every other kill minimum and the fact there are just plenty of one cost echoes in the game in general now i should mention that there is another situation where this could be helpful and that's when the damage difference before a 43311 setup and a 44111 echo setup doesn't matter probably because you're over leveled or if just in general you aren't struggling to clear the fights or content in the game at the moment and additionally before yinlin's release i myself was upgrading boss echoes to use for calcharo but realized that even if one turned out bad i could just end up using the extra or unnecessary echoes on a future character like yinlin and with this no three costs would be necessary so doing this saves a lot of time, right? Because this is where things are definitely a lot more misunderstood. Advocates for the 44111 setup suggest farming for it because you can transition the pieces to a later build and also consider it easier to farm. The issue though is that if there isn't a rush to get a good set of echoes, or if there isn't any struggle when clearing the current content, there's just no need to min-max the echo farming process and therefore even less value in the 43311 setup. But in that case, why not just wait for a good element or energy regen main echo to drop? You could then just put together the strongest setup at a later date and assume Assuming that there's no struggle with clearing content and there is no rush, clearing tacit fields at your own pace and praying for a drop or waiting until Kuro adds an event where they give a free selectable echo is also just fine. Another concern with farming 44111 is that you may not actually be saving that much echo exp in the long run. Given that transitioning to a 43311 setup is still the goal, deciding to take a detour by farming 44111 can still be costly by itself. This depends on how you choose to farm and how you choose to upgrade, but the idea that rolling 44111 will always result in less echo exp spent is simply not the case. I won't delve too deeply into this since everyone plays the game differently, but keep in mind that if you do agree that you are eventually going to transition to 43311, and 44111 is just a stepping stone, you will eventually have to roll multiple or just in general farm for three costs depending on future events and what your standards are when it comes to building characters. Now I know this final weakness has already been addressed, but it's still worth talking about and including in its own section. But 44111 just does less damage. And while most have agreed that this setup is just used as a crutch in kind of a transitioning period, there are those who do believe that having more crit damage or crit chance instead of element damage results in higher DPS overall. The issue with that is simply just the math. Some people like to calculate damage differences via spreadsheet, so here's that. So as you can see here, the damage is 24,000, but when I change the damage here to four and one, and we go attack percent and crit damage. Wow, that says 18,715 instead. And if I make it crit chance, in case you're curious, well, that's 18,597. What if you do two crit damage instead of two? Right? And that's even less. That's 16,220. So all of this is still less than if you just decided to use element percent. Look, the damage is still higher than any variation that has 44111. Even with an, an attack percent and an electro instead, and I'm going to blow their minds, even with four attack percent and crit rate, and a 43311 setup that's still better than 44111. So there you have it, a complete breakdown of what the pros and cons and when you should be using 44111 as opposed to 43311. I would beg that you guys be civil in the comment section, but generally speaking, you guys have been pretty nice. I just ask that you keep the pitchforks away. At the end of the day, 43311 is just hands down the best setup for Echoes currently in the game. But if you decide to use 44111 because it's more convenient or you are a serial dreamless farmer, then so be it no one is going to stop you from using that setup instead. That's going to be it for this video though, guys. Thanks again for watching. I just wanted to break down the 44111 setup versus 43311, the pros and cons of each, and when you should be using one build as opposed to the other. 
I did feel like there were some things that people were missing in terms of context when choosing to run the 44111 build, which is why I made this video and was also kind of the inspiration behind it. But thanks again for watching. Make sure to check out the rest of my socials. You guys have been super, super kind and very, very supportive of my Wildering Waves content. I really appreciate that. Thanks again. If you made it this far, I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Good night. YouTube thinks that you would really like this video. I highly suggest you click on this one. There's probably something you can learn from this one as well. Wow, expect the same message at the end of this video. Nope, I'm recording them all manually and live because I'm a psychopath. Anyways, see you guys next time. Stay safe. Goodbye. Click on the other video if you haven't already, by the way, just, just or subscribe either or do both. Wow, crazy. What a concept.